together. But Mr. Speaker, a couple of components that I think are particularly important are one, that this bill focuses on those people that we are scared of and those people who have shown a propensity and uh, to disregard public safety, to commit violent crimes, in particular violent crimes, Mr. Speaker, over and over again. And so House Bill 19, which is the first bill enumerated in this House Judiciary Committee substitute, and this is something that many of us um, can get behind, is increasing penalties for felon in possession of a firearm. And this is something that has bipartisan support, something mentioned by Raul Torres, a Democrat district attorney in the 2nd Judicial District. Because right now, a maximum penalty uh, for a felon in possession, the maximum penalty for a felon in possession is just a fourth degree felony. And it does not have the good time deduction. Um, it's not considered a serious violent offense for the purpose of a good time meritorious deduction. So uh, the, the maximum sentence of 18 months is often reduced to, to nine months prison time. So what this bill does, Mr. Speaker, is it increases that penalty to a third degree felony. So it doubles it. And so, Mr. Speaker, it does it in a, in a very smart and targeted way in that the enhancement only applies to serious, serious violent offenses and capital offenses. To say, say that a little differently, um, in order for the fourth degree or third degree enhancement to apply, the underlying, the predicate felony that gave rise to the felony conviction has to be a serious violent offense or a capital offense. So, Mr. Speaker and gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, gentle ladies of the body, we're not wrapping up, um, we're not including those individuals that, you know, may be the lower level drug offenders or the people who are nonviolent, the people who embezzled money. We're talking about those serious violent offenders who should not have firearms. And with respect to um, House Bill 215, Mr. Speaker, um, we, are, we all know that many of our communities, in particular the city of Albuquerque, is facing a, a police officer shortage. So what this bill does um, is it would allow for states to apply for matching grants from the state under the Law Enforcement Protection Fund. So if a law enforcement agency has a demonstrated staffing shortage of 10% or more, they can apply under the Law Enforcement Protection Fund to receive a matching grant of up to $7,500 from, from the state so that the local law enforcement agency would have, have skin in the game. And Mr. Speaker, one of the, the most important things we can do, and I think I truly believe we will never get ahead of our property crime problem in this state if we don't look at the underlying causes of substance abuse and mental illness. And what this bill does, Mr. Speaker, is it requires, and I, I, I want to thank Representative Eli for working with, with me on this, is it using our existing Medicaid um, framework, it requires that any correctional facility in the state who has an inmate within 30 days has to screen that inmate for either substance abuse or mental illness to determine if they're either living with um, mental illness or, or have sub substance abuse challenges. And if they do, um, that, that correctional facility has to offer um, that inmate the opportunity to roll in Medicaid. And then prior to release, Mr. Speaker, um, the, the Medicaid provider, the, the um, MCO, has to then pair that inmate with Medicaid-eligible services. So, Mr. Speaker, using, again, we're already a Medicaid expansion state, the framework cre uh, created by our decision to um, expand Medicare in this state, we we're able to get those individuals who uh, may be suffering from mental illness or substance abuse the treatment they need so they're not, um, they're not, they don't continue to, to be arrested and, and incarcerated. And, Mr. Speaker, the reason why I am so excited about this proposal is because we know it works. Um, other states like North Carolina, um, Florida, Ohio have adopted similar approaches and have seen a huge reduction in recidivism and inca incarceration costs. And, uh, for example, Mr. Speaker, at, at MDC, the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Jail, they recently did a survey and determined that 80% of the prison population is either living with mental illness or addicted to substances or both. So, Mr. Speaker, um, with respect to the, the MDC um, program, they tried what we're doing here, and they saw a very significant reduction in incarceration, medical incarcerated medical costs, emergency care, as well as recidivism.